Today, it's time to retire the Samsung Gear Sport that I've been wearing for the last two years. I really enjoy the Tizen OS on this, but today I'm gonna to try out something new by Mobvoi, the TicWatch S2 that has Wear OS by Google. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So Mobvoi reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out the TicWatch S2, which runs Wear OS by Google. I really wanted to try out a Wear OS device for a long time because it has full Google Assistant integration and a lot of other benefits as an Android user. Um, I really enjoyed the Tizen software and the bezel that is on the Galaxy watches, but today um, we're gonna try out something new. So some of the things you get with this is it is waterproof to five atmospheres. It has US military standard certification, two day battery life, built in GPS, heart rate monitor, and a lightweight design. So this is more of their fitness-based watch. Here it comes with a USB charging dock, user manual, and the TicWatch S2. So we can customize watch faces, receive notifications, use Google Assistant, and music streaming. So let's get this set up. Ooh, so that is the white, looks really good. And then also in the box is the charging dock. So it doesn't come with a power brick and it comes with some information about the device. So first, um, the charging dock, looks like it magnetizes on there really nice, which is cool, so we'll be playing with that a little bit more. And then here is a quick size comparison between the Gear Sport and the Tick Watch. So it looks like it is a slightly bigger screen, and um, it's much lighter. It's like there's barely even um, anything to it, but it is a much lighter watch than what I have been using for a long time. And it does look like the bands have the quick release so you could replace the bands at any time. I believe it's uh, probably 22 to 24 millimeters. So I'll check that out, but let's get this set up. You will need to download the Wear OS application on your mobile device. So then here, we're just going to open up the Wear OS application, start the setup, agree to the terms, and then there the tick watch pops up and it's going to connect via a Bluetooth connection. I do have Bluetooth on on my phone at all times. Here it's going to ask if those numbers are the same. And then here we can choose which account we want to have copied over onto the watch. I'm gonna choose my main account here. And then we'll need to confirm our screen lock to set up the device. And then here it asks if we want to copy our Google account to the watch. Yes, I do. It has now connected my Google account over to the TicWatch S2. And now it's asking if I wanna keep it connected to Wi-Fi so I can continue to get notifications, send messages, use apps on the go, connect your watch to Wi-Fi using the Wear OS by Google Cloud Sync. So we're going to say yes. And then you can chat with your friends, manage calls, sync your contacts, and send messages from your watch. We're gonna be testing out all of these I will need to allow for the Wear OS application to have access to all of that information. And here we can also check our calendar again. We have it access the calendar and then here we have notifications at a glance. So keep your phone in your pocket, allow your watch to display notifications sent to your phone. That's one of my favorite things about a smartwatch is I pull out my phone significantly less because I can see all of my notifications over here on the device. So the watch itself, um, the band does feel a tiny bit cheap, but just because the whole watch is a little bit lighter, it almost feels that way. But uh, so far, I think it's gonna work pretty well. So let's try it on here. I don't know, the white is a little flashy. Um, we'll see how it goes. While I'm waiting for this to finish up, one of the things I really like about an Android device and a smart watch or something like that is you can choose to have the watch unlock your phone. So here I can go, and set up smart lock so that as long as I'm connected to this, it is not required that I put in my pin code or my pattern um, whenever I am connected to the device. So now I have set that up. Let's go back to the watch. So here I am all set. And over here on the side, we just have one little button. So if I press that button, it's going to go into my apps, press it again, it's going to go home. Now that I have it set up, I'm gonna go and play with this for a little bit and then come back and give you my full review. All right, 
I've been wearing the TicWatch S2 for a few days now, so I'm gonna give you a little bit more of a how-to on using Wear OS, as well as my final thoughts and review of the TicWatch S2. So first, let's talk about Wear OS. So this device is pretty much like having an entire Android phone on your wrist. There are a ton of different Wear OS compatible applications, and it does get full software updates. It took a while to download that, and a little bit of battery life, but that happened the first day that this came out. So you are getting those consistent software updates. So let's look at the OS a little bit more. So here you do have the always on display. You can just tap it to wake it up or press the power key. And here I like this watch face where I can customize it a little bit. If you swipe over to the left side, here you have the Google Assistant. And then if you swipe back at any time, it'll take you back to the home screen. Now, if you swipe this way, you have what are called tiles. So this is what was actually added in the software update. So this first tile is the TicWatch application showing my steps. The second one is the Google Fit application. And then here it's showing an, a calendar appointment. And then here we have weather and here we have heart points. Now I can actually customize these different tiles in the Wear OS application. So now if we go back to the home screen, if we swipe down at any time, you have your different settings. So we can adjust brightness. Getting this out of the box, the first thing I didn't like was the brightness. So you can increase the brightness here. Of course, the brighter you do put it, the more battery life it is going to take up. So let's keep it right there. And then if we swipe back, that will take us back. Next, you have power saving mode. Here you have find my device. So at any time you can press this button and it will use the find my device Google application to locate your device. Next we have screen off, so I can press that button and it will turn the screen off. This is great for like the movie theater. You can turn it off so you're not gonna get any notifications and it's not gonna light up the screen. Next we have do not disturb and then we have airplane mode and down here at the bottom you have the Bluetooth and the battery life. Now, one of the things I did have a problem with, I actually haven't had this as much on the last few days that I use this, but typically you'll see this cloud with a line through it, meaning that there is no a connection between your device and the watch. So that was happening the first few days. Since the update, I actually haven't had it happen. And then swiping up, you can go back to your home screen. Now, compared to the Samsung watch, with the notifications were all on the left side over here. So you'd have to scroll through one at a time to see all those. With Wear OS, you scroll up to see your notifications. So here I have a SmartThings notification. I can just swipe it away to clear it. Here I have an Instagram notification. And when I set this up, I had notifications for every app turned on. Huge mistake. Make sure you go through and turn on only the notifications you wanna see on the watch. So what I have to do now is when I receive a notification that I don't wanna see, I hold down on it, and then it allows me to block notifications from the application. So I'm going to block Instagram notifications there. Here I have a Nest notification. Now I really like this because I can tap on the notification and it actually shows me a picture from that notification that it would just like on my phone. So I can just see who is at the door and then I can swipe that away. Here I have a Twitter notification so I can actually tap on that and here I get a lot more information. I could reply, I could retweet that and I could like that. Now with Wear OS, I really like the amount of options that you have in your responses right from the watch. So here I got a new notification. I can just tap on it. And then here it's giving me those quick replies. So Google's automatically learning from the conversation. And then it's giving me responses that I might want to use instead of having to go and create my own. So I can tap on one of those or I can select reply. And then here are the different options. I can use my voice. I can use a emoticon or I can use a keyboard. And then here are some preset responses that I could do to send back. So let's say I wanna click on one of these. I tap that, instantly it sends that message and it removes the notification. So here I can go through and swipe those away. So here is a YouTube notification. I got a comment, so I can tap on that. One of the cool things is I can heart it right here. So I can select the heart option, uh, dislike or other options. So I really like how notifications are laid out on Wear OS and then down here at the bottom, I can select clear all. So then at any time, if I press the button on the side, it will take me home. When I'm on the home screen, I press it again and it will take me to all the applications. So here at the top, we have our most recent applications and then we have favorites. So um, I have Play Store as a favorite, settings, fit, and timer. 
So if I scroll down this list and there's an application I wanna make a favorite, let's say I want Maps to make a favorite, I just hold down and it takes it right to the top. That was pretty cool animation. And then I hold it again, it will take it right back to where it's supposed to be in line. So maybe I want to add my Android TV remote control, hold that down, it takes it right to the top and then it is there forever. Now, there are so many different applications on here, but it was great to see a bunch of different options. So one thing I really liked were these Tick Watch exercise applications. So you could use the Google Fit application, or you can go in and do the Tick exercise app. You actually can sync that with the Mobvoi application on your phone, so you can see all that information. So I tested that out. Everything seemed to work pretty good. So if I come in here to the Tick exercise app, here you can see my last run, which was an auto run. So that's really cool. Just like on the Samsung watch, if you are working out for uh, an extended period of time, it will automatically start doing this. And I noticed that the Tick watch did this after only about two minutes, where Samsung does it after about nine minutes. So you can go through and see my calories burned, my beats per minute, my distance, and the miles um, that I did. I can share it, save it, or delete that. Um, if I go into the Tick Health application, this gives you a little bit of a breakdown with these three circles. So here in the middle, you have active minutes. Uh, then here you have the sport minutes and your daily steps. So my steps right now, I'm at 2,400. My goal for the day is 10,000. Here I have distance, exercise, active hours, and calories burned. So you have a lot of options there. Next, let's check out the Google Fit application. So there are two things that the Google Fit application focuses on, your move minutes and your heart points. So move minutes is just making sure that you're staying active throughout the day, and your heart points are those that have been, you know, a little more active where you're running or whatever. So today, I'm slacking a little bit. But here it shows your steps for the day, the calories burned, and how far you have traveled. You do have the option to test your heart rate, and then here it is showing you different times of the day in which you uh, were working out or moving. Here it shows workouts. You have this really cool guided breathing. Let's go into that real quick. Um, this is really nice. It will alert you every once in a while that you should go in and do the guided breathing. Now, one thing I have noticed that every once in a while I click on an app and it just goes to a blank screen. It takes a while to load up. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that if it's Wear OS or the speed of the watch itself. But that's one problem that I have noticed. All right, that's not gonna work right now. And then workouts. So you can actually go in here and start tracking your workouts. So if you wanted to do that through this app, you can do that. But I really like how the Tick Watch exercise app automatically started the workout. So here in the Nest app, I can set the home or away settings. I also can change the temperature down here. So I can open up the hallway and adjust the temperature just like that. Now, one thing I didn't test was the ability to take this into water. The TickWatch S2 had no problem in the water. It is five atmospheres water resistant. So that means it can go up to 40 meters or 130 feet within the water for a short amount of time and I had no issues with it. So going into the tick exercise application, there is a swimming option. You can choose your pole length of 25 meters or 50 meters and then you can scroll down and choose different targets if you would like and when you are ready to swim, you just select the play button to go. Once you do that, it will then pop up a notification that it's going to lock the screen so the water doesn't interact with the screen while you are swimming. So after a few minutes of swimming here, it shows that I have gone three laps, which is accurate, as well as 75 meters. I did notice sometimes it took a few seconds for the information to update, and then when you're done, you just swipe over, you long press right here, and then it completes the workout. So that worked really well uh, using the swim tracking. I'm not much of a swimmer, but maybe I'm gonna start swimming a little bit more, because that was pretty fun. For durability, it seemed really good. The white up here, did get a little bit dirty. I probably can wash that off, 
but uh, that is one of the problems of having a white watch. But for durability, I didn't find any problems. Um, the build was actually pretty good, even though it felt lighter. Uh, it was really good build quality. One thing I really do like is here at the end on these little clips is this has a little piece right there that locks it into place. So this little um, extra piece of the watch band doesn't come out, which was really nice to have. Now, one thing that I really like about Wear OS is the ability to link with Google Maps. So if I'm navigating on my phone, all I need to do is look here at the watch and it will automatically tell me what I need to do next for the navigation. And then I can also go in and I can see the full navigation. So I'll actually show navigation right on the watch or I could exit the navigation. Also, I really like that if I pull down here and I'm listening to music, it will show that music so I can quickly pause it or play it. And if I tap on it, then I have the volume controls as well right here, which is really nice to have at all times. Through certain applications, you are able to download music to the watch and then pair a set of Bluetooth headphones right to the watch. So here I use my Icon X with the Google Play Music application and I was able to download from my recent playlist or I could download a full album and it played no problem on the headphones. And this works great if you wanna go on a run but you don't wanna take a phone with you, you do have that option. Now, the last thing is the watch face. So if I wanna change the watch face, I just hold down and then it will give me more options. So you can actually set some of your favorites here and then if you don't want to see those anymore, you can just swipe them away. So only your top favorites are here on the front. Now, some of the watch faces do have an option down here to go in and choose the different settings. So on this watch face I'm using called Colorful, I can tap the settings and I have a few options. So I can choose the element settings, meaning these little buttons, I can choose what they do. So right now I have this one set to sunset, but I could change it to show agenda for the next event, clock items, contacts, Google Fit, General, Search, Tick Health, Tick Watch Companion, or the weather. So a lot of different little widget options that you have there. And then if I go back, I can choose the theme color. So right now I have this as black. I could choose Lake Blue or Peacock. So actually I think I have it as blue, not black. But that's how you can quickly change the watch face. So if we go into the Wear OS application, you can adjust all of those things as well. So right here we have the watch faces. I can select more and I can choose all of those. On the watch, I can go download them as well, but here it's nice to be able to have them, as well as you can find many different watch face applications in the Google Play Store. Now on the Wear OS app, there are a few more options. Here I can change those tiles, so I can choose the order of the tiles, and then here I can add a few more. It looks like you can only have five. There's really not many different options available. So if I delete that one, I can add more. There I have the other options, but that's pretty much it for now. And then here you can adjust those notifications, change the agenda settings, and go into the Google Assistant. Now if I wanna take a screenshot, I need to select Menu, and then here I have Take Screenshot of Watch. Kinda of interesting, but that is how you can take a screenshot. And then here I have some advanced features to always have the screen on, Tilt to Wake, Auto Launch Media Controls, which I really like, and then some other information right there. If I go into watch storage, after downloading quite a few applications, I still have plenty of storage available. So now let me show you the Mobvoi application. So if I open this up here, there are a lot of different settings that you have in here. So this is gonna show you the TickWatch S2, see my battery life, my steps, exercise, active hours. If I wanted to add a new device here, I could select the plus and add different options that they have. So now let's talk a little bit more about the watch itself and what it can do. So one of the things I really like is having Google Assistant on here. So I can swipe over here, it's gonna give me all that Google Assistant integration. Here I can start a top watch, I can have it play music, and it's telling me some information about upcoming uh, Google Assistant information. And I love having all of that there, but it was pretty, sporadic in how it reacted to my voice. So anytime if I ever said, okay Google, it just would never respond. It happened about one in 10 times. Hey Google. All right, there it finally worked. What's the weather like today? I like that it has that integration, but there does need to be a little bit more work on the speed in which that happens. Now you can also activate the Google Assistant just by holding down the button 
and then it will turn on the Google Assistant, which worked much better. Turn off the office lights. Turn on the office lights. Turn on the office lights. So there you can see it doesn't have any problem interacting with Google Assistant when holding down the button. It was just the voice detection that didn't work really well. Now next, let's talk about battery life. So right now, I'm currently at 63%. You've probably seen it go down quite a bit while playing this video. It does say that there is two days of battery life. So I've been using this for a few days. One day I had an excessive amount of use where I was using it to track my steps, track my workouts. I got about 15,000 steps in one day. By the end of the day, it was at 18%. So it was almost completely ran out, but I still did have battery life at the end of the day. Now the next day I was using it and I had light usage. So by the end of the day, I had about 5,000 steps. And then at the end, it still had 30% battery life. So even between 10,000 more steps, it only went down about 10%, but still it wasn't enough to be able to continue into the next day and use it uh, fully. So I definitely recommend charging this every night. And I'd say that's pretty typical. The Samsung watch I was using before, I would charge it every night. Some days I ended the day with about 50%, but usually you will need to make sure that you charge the device every single night. Um, and it all depends on what you're using. If you're using a ton of different applications, you will see worse battery life. Now I did test the second day of not having the always on display on and I did have that tiny bit better battery life, but it wasn't significant where I can say you can use the always on display and it's not gonna take a significant amount of battery away. And that's where the watch is always showing the watch face here without having the watch face be on. So when I tap it, it's on. Um, and then when it kind of goes to sleep, this is the always on display. The only other problems that I had with this is every once in a while it would glitch out even while recording this video and trying the navigation feature. It did lock up and I had to reset it and you can do that by holding down the button for 10 seconds or in the menu of the app somewhere you can go in and reset it. So it has glitched every once in a while like that. Now one more issue that I have had with the TicWatch S2 was when you receive a phone call it is very laggy in showing you who's calling. So it will show on the screen to answer or reject the call, but it doesn't show the person for quite a while. So here I'm receiving a call, and this is the first time that it shows the name at the same time as the reject and answer button. Usually it just shows the buttons with no name for about four rings. But overall, using this as a fully functional smartwatch was definitely doable. For $179, you are certainly getting a watch that is very powerful, has good battery life, and there are so many different functions that you can use for fitness tracking and using this in the water and using this as a typical fitness watch. Now, I would like to see some improvements on just the overall performance of it. Maybe you need to spend a little bit more to be able to do that with one of the Pro Series watches, but for the most part, as this being the latest fitness watch from TicWatch and using Wear OS, I would say it's a very viable solution that you could use if you are looking for a Wear OS smartwatch. If you are in the market for a new smartwatch that runs Wear OS and you wanna do a lot of fitness activity, the TicWatch S2 is definitely worth checking out. At $179, I feel like it is fully functional and has all the features that you would need in a smartwatch of today. Now there are a few little bugs that I would like to see work out, maybe a little performance fixes here and there, um, but overall it has been a really excellent experience using the TicWatch S2. If you guys have any further questions about this device, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see more wearables that you can try out, check out my playlist over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.